Good morning. Good morning. Well, my plans didn't work out. We'll see how that works. For those of you on Facebook Live, yes. My first three attempts to get connected didn't work, so we're back to my phone. So, but uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I was planning to be outside, so I didn't make a PowerPoint, but everything is printed in the bulletin, so but thank you for joining us. Well, let's begin with the welcome. Let us gather in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now seeking reconciliation with God and our neighbor, let us remember the gift of baptism and confess our sin. God of mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, against one another, and against the earth, and trusted to our care. We are worried and distracted by many things, and we fail to love you above all else. We store our treasures for ourselves, and turn away from our neighbors in need. Forgive us that we may live in the freedom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When we were laid low by sin and guilt, God made us alive together with Christ, forgiving us all our trespasses and taking our sins to the cross. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Rejoice in this good news. Amen. We'll continue with um, the opening hymn, Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. We'll continue with our hymn of praise, the old time religion.
Here ends our reading. Let's join in reading responsibly from Psalm 33, verses 12 through 22. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people he has chosen to be his own. The Lord goes down from heaven and beholds all the people in the world. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze to all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. There is no king that can be saved by a mighty army. A strong man is not delivered by his great strength. The horse is a faithful for deliverance, for all his strength he cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who wait upon his love. To block their lives from death, and to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him. For in his holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, as we have put our trust in you. Here ends the psalm. Our second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Here Abraham and Sarah exemplify the vision of faith that people of God enact in every age. He writes, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the words were prepared by the word of God, the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen may be made from things that are not visible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. But he looked forward to the city that it has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered himself faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, this one, one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as numerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith, without having received the promises. But from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, <clears throat> they would have had the opportunity to return. As it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Here ends the reading. Well, I invite you to please rise for the Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Here Jesus encourages his disciples to invest their hearts and to live fully into God's reign. Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near or no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. But dress for action, be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those waiting for the master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes, in, comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves for whom the master finds a lurk when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down and eat. And he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. now I can share a deep, dark secret with you. You may not know this, but I am really afraid of heights. It was great. My mom would ask me to climb up on the stepladder to help my dad. I'd get up about three or four steps and I'd look down and I knew for sure I was going to die. 
And then I got into the army. Well, okay, maybe I will. Um, and then I got into the army. And one of the things they make it, made us do is climb up to the top of a 40 foot tower and jump off the side. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's ever tried jumping off the side, repelling. It's great. They, they step to the side of the building and they tell you to step over. I looked over to the side of the building and my body told me not to do it. But they told me that the rope would hold me and that the guy on the ground would be able to stop me if I got out of control. It would be safe. So I took another step. My body said, damn, I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> you know? And finally, they, they give you a little tap. <laughs> but then the amazing thing is, is that after that first step you realize the rope is holding it holding you that part of the things they let us, told us to do is let go with our hands and see what happens and we find out the person below us can stop us we were safe we just weren't where my mind wanted me to be I had the trust that everything was going to work. Even though all my body, everything in me was telling me, you don't jump off a perfectly good building if you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. Then I came up and did it a second and a third time because it was kind of fun. But that first step is a really hard one. And then I think about what Jesus is telling his disciples and telling us. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions, give alms, make purses for yourselves that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near or moth destroys. Think about how hard it is to hear those words and say, give yourself to God. You know? Follow wherever God may lead. Give of your treasures. You know, it's hard to think, well, but if I give you, tra give you my money, what will I live on? If I go and do this, what will be the consequences? You know, I'm talking with somebody this week who said, you know, I'd like to tell somebody I go to church, but I'm not sure how they're going to react. You know, it's a scary thing in this world. If you come out and actively tell somebody that you go to church, that you're a Christian, that you believe in Jesus... They don't know what kind of believer you are. Are you the one who loves them? Or the one who actively has to bring them into church, convert them, make their lives match yours? It can be hard to talk to people about Christ. To be able to say, you know, I went to church on Sunday. We worshiped outside in the rain. Okay, we tried to worship outside in the rain. We did that last week. Yeah, we did that last week. It was raining a little bit harder this morning. We had some great singing. I had some good conversations with friends and family. You, know, you don't have to make it complicated. We don't have to make people like us to be like us. We just have to let them know that we believe. Let them know that St. Olaf and English Lutheran Church are here in this community. That we are places that they too can go and find out what God is up to. That's a scary thing. You never know once you mention to somebody that you go to church, that you believe in God. You don't know what the response is going to be. Are they going to go, oh, and walk away? Are they going to go, oh, tell me more? It's a scary thing to throw that out there. To let that part of your life be exposed to the world, not knowing how it's going to be responded to. But here God tells us, do not be afraid. But Jesus tells us not be afraid because God will provide for us. Whether it's giving of our time, giving of our energies, giving of ourselves, or giving of our treasures. We place our trust in God. We make our heavenly kingdom the place where we keep our whole self. Not just for one hour on Sunday morning or during devotions in the morning or evening, but as part of our whole life. And then Jesus changes up this passage when he tells the disciples, be dressed for action and have your lamp lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. 
Be dressed, be ready. Be ready for when he returns. And our Bible said, our Bible study this week asked the question, how often do you think of the second coming of Jesus? Or the end of the world? <coughs> you thought of it this week? You didn't think about that when you heard the thunder, that maybe that was the trumpets coming? Mm -hmm. It's not something we usually worry about. It's been 2,000 years. What are the chances tomorrow or today is going to be the day? But Jesus tells us, be ready. We do not know when he's coming. Yeah, I find it interesting to think about this, be ready. I mean, for when he returns. One of my studies was telling me that it's not so much being up, waiting at the door to let him in. It's making sure that you got all your work done. Yeah, and I'm sure nobody's ever heard the phrase, while the cat's away, the mice will play. Yeah. I'm sure nobody's ever been in a school where they've had a substitute teacher in class. Where all the students go, hmm, do I really have to behave? And nobody's been left, a home, left home alone while their parents are away, so they don't have to worry about chores that day. Yeah. Jesus is reminding us, we have to do our daily tasks. He will know when he returns whether we got our work done, whether we are ready for him to come, whether we had a meal prepared, whether we had everything brought in from the fields and from this, and from that. I can't remember who, from having the animals butchered. So he can eat. After all, they didn't have refrigeration. They didn't have cupboards. He was prepared as he go. Or were they lazy and hoped that the master would come late and they wouldn't have to worry about it? It's not just about standing up and looking out the door. It's about making sure we live our lives as though Jesus were here all the time. Not only is it telling our story, but it's being people who love those around us. I got some glasses back on. You know, I like that old time religion. He makes me love everybody. You know? It's about being that kind of people. That they know we have God's love in us. Not just when they know we're at church, but all the time. It's about being ready all the time to show people that we believe. I like the ending here. Blessed are the slaves who the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. And I don't know about you, but when I hear about Jesus coming in the end of days, I think about judgment, I think about catastrophe. I don't think about showing up to grandma's house and finding out she made lots and lots of cookies. You know? Think about the one, oh, that. Jesus has taken our sins. So when he comes, he's not here just to judge. He's here to welcome us in, to serve us. Imagine Jesus coming. As soon as he sees us, he puts on his work clothes and says, here, let me help you. Let me serve you. A different way to look at this second coming. Not something to be afraid of, to be worried about something to look forward to. Just as Jesus washed his feet, feet of the disciples on the night in which he was betrayed, he has come to serve, to love us. Not so that we live in fear, but so that we live in hope and expectation, knowing that he is coming. And so we live in that hope. We join in that promise. Think about our next song would be the old rugged cross. That on that cross he suffered for us, ours took on our sin and shame. So that we can be his now and always. And in him we put our trust and faith. This day and always. Know that he is faithful and loving. Amen. But for our hymn of the day, we'll continue with the old rugged cross. <coughs>
now rooted in Christ and sustained by the Holy Spirit, we offer a prayer for the church, the world, and all of creation. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon your church. Though all who proclaim the gospel with your spirit, equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy. And let your loving kindness be upon all of your creation. Dwell among us and stay, sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. In places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. And we especially give you thanks this good morning, this morning, for the bounty of your reign. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon the world. Be our helper and our shield in places torn apart by strife and violence. Raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon all your children. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Console those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you. Help us to trust your promise and not be afraid. We especially pray for your healing touch for Cheryl, Arlen, Faye, Don, Steve, Alan, Gary, Helen, Lorelai, Ricky, Don, Jerome, Linda, Roger, Cheryl, Ricky, Mary, Brad, and Misty, and all of those who name in our hearts. We pray for all those who are grieving this morning. Give them your comfort and your strength. We especially pray for the family and friends of Shirley Starson. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of marriage. We pray that you would sustain and enhance all marriages. We especially pray that you would bless Jeff and Corolla as they were married this weekend. Lord, or married in Sioux Falls. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And gracious God, direct us to be your by your truth and peace as we prepare as a church for the churchwide assembly of the LCA this week. Guide us to stay now. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon this community. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Strengthen our ministries and all who care for those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, with thanksgiving, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in you. As they place their hope in you, so strengthen us to trust in your promises of new life. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you all. Also with you. Let us share this. the offer.
Now let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, for the green of earth given for all, for the talents we are given to share, for this bread and wine. Transform us through the body of Christ, that feasting on this food and drink, our lives may reflect your generosity. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Now let us pray as our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The table is now ready.
Now receive the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, in this holy communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourish us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love all, love you with all our heart. Say a redeemer with a willing spirit, and honor the earth that you have made. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> The um, Grace and Trinity Church ladies in Westbrook will have a salad supper on Wednesday, August 24th at 6 p.m. at Grace Lutheran. And so yeah, all the ladies are invited to join them for that. Um, thank you to everybody who helped with Bible study. It was an exciting time. I think the kids had a lot of fun, and the adults, I know, had a lot of fun too. So let's see, this week on our schedule, we have on um, Wednesday, we have our Bible study. This will be at English at 9 o'clock and live stream. We'll be at Country View at 1 o'clock with Bible study. On Joint, Eng Joint English and St. Olaf Council. Okay, that will be at St. Olaf at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. And then what, Thursday morning, we have worship at Country View at 8.30 and the Welcome Bible study at 9 o'clock at Go Free. Um, we will not be going to St. Dismas this year. We didn't have enough volunteers. And then next week, we will have joint worship at English and uh, our Saviors at 9 o'clock. Our mission of the month is St. Dismas Prison Ministry, which brings the Word of God to prisoners in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Okay, any other announcements? And receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord look upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. We will.